Welcome back to Benny's Custom Works, proudly supported by Spares Box. Today we're back on the Sigma. A uh, little bit different today, we're going to be tackling some interior stuff. So we've got a heap of acoustic and thermal control products to put into it. Um, car builders have sent us a heap of stuff for that. We've also got a new carpet. So straight up we're going to be ripping basically the seats and the center console out, then working out how to put the carpet in the best way. Uh, the carpet kit comes uncut, so we do have to cut it for things like the automatic transmission shifter. Um, I've got to be pretty sympathetic with the way that I cut it though because we are going to convert this to manual. So I don't, don't want to go hacking the carpet out in a way that it's not going to work with the, uh, the manual transmission. Um, handbrake's also got to be cut around and I'm sure we're going to have to be cutting things like the seat mount holes, the seat belt mount holes and all sorts of other bits and pieces, maybe even like a footrest or something. Um, but yeah, I haven't even opened the carpet kit yet, so it'll be interesting to uh, crack that open and have a look what it comes with once we get all this apart. So we'll uh, dive right in. So that's the two speaker wires for the rear speakers, right? So normally you wire the head unit to have each speaker, like positive and negative of the speaker connect to the speaker. Mm -hmm. But the way they've wired this, the positive wires or trigger wires, i.e. the logic that this has been wired up in, are wired to the head unit. But the ground wires or negative wires have been literally just wired to ground. So I'm not quite sure how that even works. Whatever. Yes, I know the headlining sagged. You may be wondering why I've got the car back on the hoist halfway through doing the carpet. Um, just looking at the floor pan, I've decided to actually just pull the uh, transmission shifter out. It's literally just one bolt on the bottom and a couple of screws on the top. And that's gonna make it so much easier in actually laying the carpet in. We're not gonna to have to try and wrestle it over the top of the shifter and guess where that shifter hole is because 
having it sort of 400 mil out of the floor, you're never going to get an accurate position on where you've actually got to cut that carpet. So I think a much easier way is going to be to remove the shifter, trim the hole, and then refit it later. Um, potentially, if you don't do it that way, it could cost you a $200 plus carpet kit. So um, yeah, for the 10 minutes of mucking around, even if this is on the ground, it's only going to take sort of 10, 15 minutes to jack it up, knock the shifter out, um, and just put the carpet in that way. So we're going to whip that out and then bring it back down and continue along. We've now come to the part where we're going to start putting some of this acoustic treatment into the car. This is the stage one, which is a uh, basically a stick-on um, aluminium-backed sheet. So there's um, they, they come pre-cut in uh, 500 by 300 millimeters. So it's a pretty handy size for pretty much anywhere. I've just sort of sized it up and worked out that it's going to go pretty well. Two pieces in the footwell that way, and then we'll do one over the tunnel and then another two there. They'll probably do two to three sheets in each rear footwell. And same thing, one over the top of the tunnel. Then we'll just do one sheet under each back seat panel. Um, obviously, the more of this stuff you put on, the better it's going to be. But considering this car is actually pretty well done from the factory, um, any of this stuff's going to help. So we're just going to do the single sheet. Uh, then we've got a second stage underlay, which is also adhesive, so that will stick to this. Um, then we'll, we'll put our carpet in. But looking at how well the floor is already treated, even from factory, and also that none of it's broken up, I'm not going to try removing the original stuff and disturbing it because it, it'll probably actually create more problems than benefits. So going over the top with this will work well. Uh, I've also got a roller to help get into all the contours of the floor pan. Obviously, if you're just gonna put this on a flat sheet, quick roll and you're done. But any OEM floor pan's got a lot of contours and different shapes and rises for seat cross members and all sorts of stuff. So this little roller, which also comes from car builders, is gonna help us get into those uh, shapes and make this stick down a lot better. Also, one thing worth mentioning, you probably saw us wiping down the floor. We used, uh, we used brake cleaner because we've got it, but you could also use um, like thinners or a prep wash. You do want to make this surface really clean before you go sticking anything down to it because if you've got dust or dirt or grime, basically this thing's going to stick to it when you put it in. Then over time, it'll just lift off. Um, but yeah, basically the cleaner, it's just like paint. The cleaner it is when you start, the better the uh, outcome's going to be. So give it a good clean and you shouldn't have any dramas. stage one sound dead in the floor and we've also put a little bit under the back seat um, the reason I haven't gone crazy with that under the back seat is we're actually going to put a different back seat in this car so the uh, the up model Sigma in this era actually had a reclining back seat so when we do other interior upgrades we're going to put that later back seat in we've also got some uh, front seats out of a different model Mitsubishi which in Japan came in the JDM spec Sigma uh, so we're going to retrim the front and rear seats to match uh, with some cloth, which is actually going to be a similar colour to the vehicle um, as a highlight insert. And then we're just going to go with the sort of the tan outer edge that'll match the door trims and the, and the B pillars and that sort of stuff. I've also got some door trims coming from Japan from the, uh, the JDM uh, A121A Sigma Galant. So actually from the same car that these came off. So that's cool. Um, so that'll kind of freshen up the interior and tidy it up. Uh, and that's the reason I didn't go scrubbing all the door cards when I was cleaning the B pillars and the dash and some other bits and pieces. So um, not really too keen to just sort of burn half an hour cleaning all that stuff properly because it's all going to come out probably in the next few weeks anyway to replace all that with the JDM gear. But now we're going to move on to the stage two of the sound ending, which is the carpet underlay. It's also an adhesive, so that will stick to the stage one stuff we've already put in. Um, we're just going to kind of 
fit it pretty loosely. I think we'll actually trim it to size first before we try sticking it down because it is going to be hard to work with in such large sheets because it, it comes in a lot larger sheets than the floor, uh, the, the, the stage one. So I think it's about uh, 900 by a metre out of each one of those. So you get two pieces per box. We've got a couple of boxes. Uh, I'd say we'll probably use two boxes in the car just to sort of pat it right out. But we'll uh, hook into that now. More fun times.
We've got heaps done today on the Sigma again. We've got all of our car builders sound deadening in, all of our underlay in, and we've now got our carpet in. It was a much bigger task than I'd actually thought about. So we've spent a full day on it. So I would definitely recommend to allow a full day if you're going to do a similar sort of job. Um, but yeah, it's gone in. It's, the carpet actually fits quite well for an aftermarket molded carpet. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, yes, just stoked with the outcome actually. Massive thanks also to car builders. Those guys have uh, sent all those bits out to us and it's all gone in really well. Uh, thanks for watching guys and we'll see you next time.